Welcome to Micro Terrors. Scary stories for kids. Where it's always the spooky season. Full of chills. Thrills. And spine tingling spooks. Micro Terrors are family friendly frights for those ages 8 and up. And while our stories are for younger ears, we are still talking about things that go bump in the night. And some children may not be able to handle what others can. Parental consent is recommended. Now, for tonight's Micro Terror. The Curse of the Leshikan Written by Sarah Faith a light, steady snowfall had blanketed the ground. It was Thanksgiving break. Friday morning, the grown-ups dropped off the kids at Grandpa Joe's and went on a weekend ski trip. Grandpa Joe stuffed the cousin crew with leftovers, then sent them outside to have an adventure, just be home by supper. Calvin sat down on the bench next to the shed. We could build a fort. Grandpa said we could do whatever we want with the wood pile over there. Maybe we could build a bonfire and burn these geeky cousin crew t-shirts. Your mom thinks we're still in preschool. They laughed. Hey Adele, you want to help us build an epic fort and bonfire? She said, you two may be content to have an imaginary adventure, but I'm not. She folded up a piece of paper and zipped it into the front pocket of her backpack. See you clowns later, I'm going for a hike. What was that? Hank demanded. What did you just hide in your backpack? I know what it is. Calvin swiped at Adele's backpack and missed. It's Grandpa Joe's map of the forest. You aren't supposed to have that. It belonged to our uncle who ran away when our parents were kids. Hank frowned. Wait a second. Our mom never told us she had another brother. You must be thinking of someone on your mom's side of the family. Whatever. Let's see that map, Adele. Not a chance, Adele gloated. It was sitting on top of my backpack because he wanted me to find it. Calvin dug the toe of his boot into the half inch of snow that covered the leaves and argued with his sassy younger cousin. That's a lie. He keeps that map locked in his office. So let's see it, Hank said. It's probably a kid's menu from a seafood restaurant. Adele took out the map and held it up for them. They saw generic drawings of kids' food and an ocean-themed word search. Hank slapped Calvin on the back and roared like a pirate. Ahoy! Your treasure map came from Captain Silvers! Calvin said, let's see the other side. Adele flipped the menu over. On the other side was a grid with words, symbols, and an impressive hand-drawn compass rose. Here's your map. Hank's glasses fogged up. He took them off and pressed his nose to the map. This is impressive. We learned to make these kinds of maps on, on that Boy Scout trip, remember? Yeah, Calvin said. Looks like he's crossed off the boxes where he's searched. So what's left? Here. Hank pointed to the only open space on the map. High in the northeast corner was a clearing with a tree symbol with an orange ring around it. Only place it could be. Only place what could be? Adele asked. Calvin explained. The great tree. You know the legend about the tree and the amulet? Hank interrupted. And the woods are haunted by the spirit of a powerful medicine woman. The legend says there's a giant bird that guards the woods. It stole something from the medicine woman. She cursed the bird, confiding it to the forest for eternity. Calvin said. The only way to break the curse is to return what he stole. Hank sighed. <sighs> it's just a story. Why would a treasure be buried in the woods behind Grandpa's house? I don't know, Adele said as she ran towards the woods, but I'm going to find out. <whistles> She'd not gone far into the birches when the call of a large bird echoed between the hills and shook the trees. Calvin gripped Hank's arm. Tell her to stop! It's not safe! 
Look up! A bird with silvery blue wings circled the treetops at the edge of the forest. Dude, let go! We've been playing in these woods our whole lives! Let's follow her and keep an eye on her. Nothing else to do. Calvin let go of Hank and hurried after Adele, shouting for her to stop. He wanted to run, but the snow had made everything slippery. He's right! Hank yelled. Come back! Adele was three years younger and the toughest. She pointed at the bird that flew in a tight circle above them. It's just a vulture flying kind of low. Hank's mouth dropped open. That is the biggest bird I've ever seen. That's not a vulture, Calvin said in a low voice. It's big enough to carry a cat and a goose in each claw. Adele whispered. Then what is it? Hank whispered. It's the Leshikin. Calvin elbowed Hank. Never say its name. It can hear you. Sorry. Hank teased. I'll play along. This isn't a joke, you guys. I'm going inside. Calvin ran towards the back door. Adele smirked. You clowns think I'm going to fall for some campfire story. You're pranking me. You think my map is silly? I think being scared of a legend is silly. Adele waved her arms at the enormous bird that circled above. Hey, Leshikin, are you lost? The great tree is that way. It was a deafening pop and a flash of light. Everyone jumped and covered their ears. The bird swooped down past the treetops and soared toward them across the clearing. Its great silvery wings chopped the air like helicopter blades. Hank grabbed the handful of his sister's puffy purple coat and steered her back towards the house. I can't believe we're running from a bird! The trio clambered through the door. Calvin quickly locked it behind them. Grandpa Joe stumbled into the room, fresh from a nap. What's all the commotion, kids? They all spoke at once. Whoa, 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 one at a time. Uh, Hank, you go first. A giant bird is chasing us. The bird screeched again, sending tremors through the house. A framed photo of their parents slid off its nail and fell to the floor. Grandpa Joe put on his glasses and looked out the window in time to see the bird land in the yard. It can't be! It paced in the fresh snow and extended its massive wings. This is uh, unexpected. Unexpected? Adele repeated. Are you friends with this bird? Uh, you could say that. He put on his coat and boots. You go in the kitchen and warm up. He pointed to the floors. Take off your boots first. Calvin said, You're acting like this is normal, Grandpa. Hank joined in. We can't let you go out there. That bird could be dangerous. Instead of losing his patience with his grandkids, he smiled at them. This bird isn't dangerous. He's my son. They stared out the window as their grandpa crossed the snowy yard and bowed his head to the bird. Adele whispered, Look at its eyes. They're huge. The bird bowed its head at their grandpa and then enveloped him in its wings. They all gasped. Calvin said, I'm going out there. He hurried through the back door with Hank and Adele close behind him. Let go of him! Adele cried, We aren't going to let the Leshikin take you, Grandpa. The bird opened its wings and released their grandpa. I told you to stay inside. I'm not in any danger. The bird opened its enormous black beak and screeched. They covered their ears and fell down on the snow. The bird turned and bounded for the woods. Grandpa Joe called after it. You don't have to leave. They don't understand. They're just kids. There was another loud pop. A second later, the massive blue and silver bird was soaring above them. Grandpa Joe ordered them to go inside. I have a story to tell you. At the kitchen table over cold pumpkin pie and hot chocolate, Grandpa Joe said, I know you've all heard the legend. The Leshikin is a monster that hunts people. If it catches you, it can keep you forever. If you look at its eyes, something terrible will happen. 
But after what you saw today, it's time you knew the truth. Grandpa Joe looked at his grandkids with somber eyes. He took a deep breath. When your parents were around your age, they had another brother. He tried to mask his sadness with a smile. When your Uncle Ted was about 15, he told us that he'd found a map to the oldest tree in the forest. We all thought he was being adventurous. When he found the tree, there was an amulet hanging from one of its branches. He thought he'd found a treasure, so he took the amulet. Ted didn't know he'd made a huge mistake. The spirit of a powerful medicine woman rested in that amulet, protecting the great tree. The old woman's spirit haunted Ted. He went to the forest to return the amulet. She accepted the amulet, but punished Ted. She turned him into the Leshikin, the giant but gentle bird you just witnessed. Adele gasped, her hand covering her mouth. You're saying the Leshikin isn't some evil creature, but part of our family? Yes. Grandpa Joe took off his glasses and rubbed his eyes. Grandpa, Adele asked, is Uncle Ted sorry for what he did? Wouldn't you be? Calvin snapped. Grandpa pointed his fork at the kids. No squabbling. We have to work together if we want to help Ted. Early the next morning, Grandpa Joe unfolded the map on the table and outlined the best route to the great tree. This is the only place left to search. There's a cavern on the side of a ridge. It serves as a tunnel between the forest and great tree. Can you come with us, Grandpa Joe? He smiled at Adele and shook his head. I'm too old to make the journey. It's up to the next generation now. Bring your Uncle Ted home. Filled with purpose, the cousin crew ventured deep into the forest. Remember, we'll know we're there when the forest gets so dark we need our flashlights. Is anyone else scared? Hank asked. Don't worry, big brother, I'll protect you. The first snow of the season made the ground slippery and slowed their progress. After hours of hiking, they crossed over a creek. Calvin unfolded the map and confirmed it. The creek is behind us, the valley between the two hills in front of us, and this boulder is here on our right. Hank nodded. He told us to change directions at the boulder. Looks like we're going that way. They walked past the boulder into the dark, scrubby undergrowth. Although it was late November, the light was filtered green by the dense canopy. After a few minutes, they emerged into a clearing. Did we step into a fairy tale? Adele pointed to a stone hut a few yards ahead and squinted. Does it look blurry to you guys or do my eyes have frostbite? Light's weird deep in the forest. Your eyes play tricks on you. Let's get closer. Calvin strolled up to the hut. Before he reached it, the dim light was drained from the forest. Take out your flashlight, Hank said. We're here. Adele shone her flashlight on the hut. Did he say it was a hut or a cave? Calvin crouched in front of the low, dark entrance. Hard to say. The closer I get to it, the less it looks like a hut. Suddenly the darkness was interrupted by the forlorn screech of the Leshigan. That's Uncle Ted. He followed us. That must be the right place. Come on. Adele and Hank crouched down and followed Calvin into the cave. What if someone's in here? Hank whispered. Adele whispered, Cavemen, trolls, and bears, oh my! Quiet! Calvin hissed. Let's look for the amulet and get out of here! They crawled on their hands and knees for several feet, then reached a chamber with enough space to stand. The beams of their flashlights bounced off the walls of the cave. Hank said, whoa, when his flashlight reflected off a row of crudely shaped crystals strung on vines. Someone had lined the natural shelf formations with more shimmering crystals and dried flowers. Calvin ordered Hank to search that area. Aren't we looking for a passage to the great tree? Adele showed her flashlight on the wall. We don't know if the amulet is even in here. 
Hank hung back. I hope somebody brought a barf bag because it smells like a squirrel died in here. Suddenly Adele squealed. What is that? Calvin shrugged. It looks like a pile of bones and fur. His flashlight slipped from his sweaty grip. We need to find a way out. A powerful gust of damp air swept through the chamber, zapping their flashlights and plunging them into darkness. A voice echoed through the chamber, warning them of the consequences of their actions. Calvin put a finger to his lips. Shh! The medicine woman knows we're here! Invisible arms squeezed the cousins and lifted them off the ground. A thunderous, disembodied voice said, Another member of your bloodline come to steal from me? You may not believe us, but... Hank pleaded with the invisible force. But we're here to help our uncle. We want to ask you to lift the curse. Adele's voice was thick with fear. He's really sorry. He didn't know what he was doing. He was just a, a kid having an adventure. Calvin said, We're sorry our uncle disturbed your resting place. We want to make things right. She loosened her invisible grip and the children fell to the ground. I acknowledge your sincere wish to help your uncle. Becoming the Leshikin was not a curse. It was his wish. There was a loud pop and a flash of blue light. In an instant, they were in a clearing that was home to a tall and majestic tree. Calvin, Hank, and Adele faced a misty shape of an elderly woman who spoke to the tree in unfamiliar words. Seconds later, they heard the call of the Leshikin as it swooped out of the sky and landed near the ancient tree. No one spoke as the bird bowed deeply to the apparition. The misty form moved toward the giant bird and placed the amulet around its neck. Bright blue and silver light burst forth from the amulet. Seconds later, the bird and the medicine woman were gone. In their place was a teenage boy in a red coat and blue jeans. His niece walked over to him. Hi, Uncle Ted. I'm Adele. Our mom is your little sister. She gestured to Hank. We're sorry we were afraid of you. We know better now. Hank, emboldened by his sister's bravery, approached the bird. Hi, Uncle Ted. Now I know. When Bob says I'm acting like her brother, she means you. They smiled at each other. Calvin approached. I'm Calvin. My dad is your older brother. We're sorry that we couldn't help sooner. We didn't know. Ted smiled at his niece and nephews. You three remind me of a family photo. I can't thank you enough for coming all this way to set me free. My dad sees it as a curse that took his son. He's angry and determined. I miss my family, but I chose this life. He walked over to the ancient tree and rested the palm of his hand on its trunk. Can you do me a favor? Tell my dad, your grandpa, that I'm happy guarding the forest and this sacred tree. I can do more as the Leshikan than I ever could as a person." Ted removed the amulet and hung it from the lowest branch of the tree. There was the familiar pop, and he instantly was restored to his avian form. They waved goodbye as their uncle flew away. Adele grinned. I can't wait to hike up here again and hang out with Uncle Ted. With the help of the map, they determined which way was south and made it home. Grandpa Joe listened to the cousins recount their adventure. He sighed. Eh, your Uncle Ted always had a curious and adventurous spirit. It's fitting that he found solace as the Leshikan, as a guardian of the forest and the sacred tree. Grandpa stood up from his chair and walked to the window. I don't miss him as much now that I know he's happy. I won't stand in his way. Grandpa Joe turned and smiled at his grandchildren. You three showed a lot of courage. You braved the odds to help your family. You trusted the map, worked together, and stayed safe. I'm proud of you. Adele ran to him and hugged him. What do we do now? He looked at them with a glimmer of hope. Uh, let's keep this story in the family for now. Telling others could put your uncle and the forest at risk. 
One day, your children will venture into those woods, and you'll know that they're safe because the Leshikin is watching over them. She closed the scrapbook. And so the story of the Leshikin became a cherished family tale, passed down through the generations, a reminder of the power of forgiveness, acceptance, and the enduring bond of family. A little girl with blonde hair and glasses sat across with her, cradling a cup of hot chocolate in her hands. Aunt Adele, is that a true story? She leaned across the kitchen table and smiled at her niece. Come on a hike with me tomorrow and find out. Thank you for listening to Micro Terrors. Join us each Saturday for another scary story. For more fun, visit our website at microterrors.com, where we will also have spooky games you can print out and play, like wicked word searches, mysterious mazes, and more. Microterrors.com is also where you can find us on your favorite social media and even send in your own scary story for us to tell. Plus, you'll learn more about our author, Scott Donnelly, who has other horrors for both young and old. I hope you'll join me again soon for Micro Terrors, scary stories for kids. Hey weirdos, be sure to click the like button and subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. I post videos seven days a week. And while you're at it, spread the darkness by sharing this video with someone you know who loves all things strange and macabre. If you want to listen to the podcast, you can find it at WeirdDarkness.com slash listen.